and there is a polished center second hand. The movement can be swung out of the case, turning on a bolt and joint, exactly as do those of ordinary watches of the period. It's no good. We're gonna have to try and outrun her. Mr. Markland, put on all the sails you can carry and set a course due east. Aye, aye, Captain. Can we get any more men aloft, Mr. Van der Wijn? We're taking all water forward. We've got to keep the pumps, man, sir. and crown wheel are both very small compared with the size of the balance. But not content with this, Harrison fitted between the fourth and crown wheels a most ingenious remontoir whose action at first sight is almost uncanny. <laughs> starting to lift. Quick as you can, Boston. You heard the captain! Steady no! Don't pull away! Come on now! The watch beats five to a second, a slight recoil being perceptible at each beat, and goes for 30 hours. The plates are of brass, polished, but not gilt. The pivot holes are jeweled as far as the third wheel, that is to say, those of the balance, staff, detente, contract wheel, fly, fifth, fourth, and third wheels. The jewels are rubies, and the end stones diamonds. It is a masterpiece, weighing only slightly less than the brain that conceived it. Harrison? Morning, Captain. How's your watch? Dry, sir, I think. Must be the only thing on board this ship that is. Who will believe in a naval watch that cannot survive a storm? There's many a ship that doesn't survive a storm, Mr. Harrison. But the Navy don't stop making them. It's not the Navy I have to convince, sir. It is the board of longitude. I'm very sorry, Reverend, to hear that your journey to St. Helena was unsuccessful. Unsuccessful, sir? I think you've been misinformed. A thousand miles to observe the planet Venus, and it turns out to be a cloudy day. Am I misinformed? The transit of Venus was but one part of my expedition. The lunar observations on the voyage were most interesting, as I shall explain to the board. Mr. Harrison. Mr. William Harrison. We'll go together, if you don't mind. My instructions are quite clear, sir. Don't worry. They can't hurt us. We've won. Mr. Harrison, is this your idea of a scientific observation? I must apologize, sir, but the journey back was very difficult and uh, my papers were damaged. I am referring to the fact that it appears only one observation was taken in Jamaica. No, 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 two, sir. But the second, it appears, was taken from another position. I had very little time, sir, but I can assure you the observation was most carefully taken, with witnesses present as instructed by the board. Uh, Mr. Harrison, do you have any formal astronomical training? No, sir. But I have been taking observations from my father since I was six years old. Really? This is John Harrison. Ah! 
My lords, gentlemen, if I may beg your indulgence, it is 25 years since I first had the honor to address this board under the chairmanship of Dr. Edmund Alley. And since that time, I've worked with only one ambition, to satisfy your requirements as laid down by Act of Parliament for the discovery of longitude at sea. It is with both great pride and honor and humility that I stand here today with my son after his great trial. Thank you, Mr. Harris. May I? Thank you. Now, I have asked you here to inform you of the resolution of the board. That firstly, the brief calculations of Mr. William Harrison are to be sent for computation, and the instruments used in those observations are also to be sent for examination. The board will then consider these reports at a further meeting, the date of which will be announced in due course. That will be all for now, gentlemen. Sir, I am an old man, and an old man can sometimes find his senses unexpectedly weakened. There is perhaps an element of your argument that I have misunderstood, or even misheard. My watch lost, lost one minute, 53 and a half seconds after 81 days at sea, as witness and sign in the, in the papers you have before you, which you seem so keen to put away. I have fulfilled the terms most exactly as laid down in the act of Queen Anne, and I demand that you consider the question of my reward. Mr. Harrison, I am not a commissioner of the gaming board here to settle some bet. I am a scientist, bent on investigation of a most serious subject. Now, the board are at present unsatisfied with the information before them, but have decided to make further investigation with the help of some expert advice. Now, you will be summoned in due course to hear the results of that investigation. Thank you. Uh, any observations? On what grounds? Too few, attacking from different positions. It's no more necessary to make multiple observations than it is to look at one's watch a hundred times at the time. We'll go to Greenwich tomorrow and start a program of experiments to prove exactly that. We shall fight them. I'm interested only in observations, not in the timekeeping of the clock. Because they are astronomers, that's all they understand. Rupert Gould, 10.30. Program? Children's Hour. You've got seven and a half minutes, which is about 1,500 words. How long is your script? I don't have a script. But you have to have a script. I have a watch. Don't worry, it'll be seven and a half minutes. Well, don't forget, at the end, say goodbye, everyone. Mm -hmm. Count to three. One, two, three. Then say goodbye. Why the pause? So the children can say goodbye back to you. I want you to close your eyes and try to think a thought that nobody else has ever thought before. Think very hard. Pay no attention to anybody else around you. What do you see? Is it just darkness? Or is there a picture? Most of us with our eyes closed just see the dark. But the artist or the scientist can sometimes see something new, something never thought of before. It's these ideas that can change our lives. And the people who think of them, whether they are musicians, painters, architects or engineers, are called inventors. Some of you listening now are inventors. Open your eyes. Look around. Can you tell who it'll be? Will it be somebody Very with good. untidy hair and big glasses? I doubt it. But new inventions often seem 